Dear NIOS learners, welcome to the NIO studio. Today we are going to talk about teaching learning methods in work education. Let me just introduce myself. I am Dr. Sonal Chhabra and we are going to learn more about the teaching learning methods which are used in work education in this session. As you all understand that there are different factors which would affect the choice of methods or activities in any subject, be it work education, be it science, be it social science, any subject. But when it comes to work education, let us understand the factors which would affect the choice of methods which we are going to choose in work education. One of the factors which would influence is the concept of form and objectives of work experience which we have as a teacher. Now whatever form or whatever objectives I have for work experience that would definitely impact the kind of methods or the kind of activities I am going to choose when I am going to deal or dwell into work education with children. Secondly, it also matters that how do I see that how do children behave, how do they learn and how, what are their different ways of behavior, how do we develop ways of behavior. So all these things would determine or would affect the factors, would affect the method which we are going to choose for work education. There is another factor which holds quite an importance is the values which we have and the values about the opportunities we want to provide in the child relationship with the work education. See whatever experience the child is going to have during the work education classes is uh, going to be impacted by the kind of methods which we choose and it's the other way around also. The kind of method which we choose also depends on the values which we intend to provide. Let's say if I intend to provide the kind of uh, a value of dignity of labor. So my work education method is going to be determined by that factor. If I intend to provide honesty to the students or if I intend to promote honesty to the students while giving them work education experience, my method is going to be different. So these are basically the three factors which determine. There are other factors also but these are three factors which are particularly pertaining to work education. There are other factors like the age group of the children, the syllabus which you have, uh, the content, the resources which you have in the school. So all those factors are there but these were the three factors which are pertinent to work education and they would impact any kind of setting. Now we all need to understand that when it comes to work education, in work education we intend that children should be given an opportunity to learn by doing. Now that's the basic premise of work education when we say that children should be given the opportunity to learn by doing. So the doing has to be there in whatever form of teaching method we choose on. But at the same moment we also know that, that it's not possible that every time there is going to be doing by your hand only. It can be doing by somebody else's hand also. So we need to realize but we need to keep in mind that children should be given opportunities to learn by doing. Similarly, we need to provide them simple opportunities of active participation for students in work education based methods. So again that factor comes of active participation. Let's say if we are not able to give them that opportunity of learning by doing then we need to give them that opportunity at least wherein some kind of active participation is involved in work education based methods. Now with this backdrop in mind that what are the different factors which affect our choice of methods and what are the basic principles of work education of learning by doing and active participation of the students. Let's move further and try to understand that what are the different methods which are used in work education which are popularly used in work education. Now there are five popular methods which are used in work education. One is observation, the second one is demonstration, the third one is practical, the fourth one is project and the fifth one is excursion. Now these are five methods which have been used but they are not the limitless. I mean that doesn't mean that these only these five methods can be used. It really depends on the teacher, it really depends on her or his innovativeness and involvement with the students and also the kind of resources which they are available which would determine the kind of method the teacher can use but primarily these are the five methods which are used. Now let's come down to the first method which is talking about the observation method. Now observation method is a method which is particularly dependent on inquisitive tendency of the children. We all know by now that children are very inquisitive in nature. By nature they are curious, they want to learn new things, they want to see the logic or they want to see how the things are happening. You would have seen these things with the younger children also. 
with the older children also and with the so called much older children also but that really depends on that whether we are able to preserve their inquisitiveness or not let's say if we are the ones who are just providing them the answers or we are just providing them the facts then their inquisitiveness gets killed but otherwise if we talk of naturally the children are very inquisitive and this is what can be used in the observation method now how observation method can be used it can be used in two ways number one is to ask the students to observe any occurrence object or socio cultural event and to develop their knowledge and understanding now what is happening in this way is that you are asking the students to observe something which is happening in their socio cultural setting so they are uh, uh, observing some occurrence some object or any kind of event which is happening in their setting let's say if there is uh, an ncc camp in the school they are observing those kind of thing if there is a swachh bharat abhiyan uh, camp is being organized in the school they are observing those kind of things so now what is happening the students are observing any kind of occurrence object or socio cultural event and then they are trying to develop their knowledge and understanding about that particular thing which they are observing so this is one method in which observation can be used now what is going to happen here is that they will gain experience by observing now we have talked about observation of socio cultural events or objects but the observation can be of the economic activities also in the social environment and the workplaces also let's say if you are taking them uh, to a trip to a potter's uh, workplace so the, they will be able to see that how the potter works in his or her social environment in his or her workplace and the child will be able to see the kind of economic activities which are involved there in that particular setting so it can be both ways by observance of occurrence object or socio cultural event and secondly by observance of economic activities specifically in the social environment and the workplaces now this is how observation works now let's move down to another method the second one which we are going to discuss today is the demonstration method now what is demonstration method again in this method what we are doing is we are trying to move from general to specific which means that the children or the students are going to observe something general and then they are going to move down to something specific similarly it also means a procedure of a particular activity is demonstrated before the learners so you are taking up a setting you have arranged a setting in your classroom and you are demonstrating that particular activity in front of the students and the students are trying to understand from that demonstration so you doing the whole activity in the uh, in their presence in their setting and then the children are going to learn from them now what is going to happen here is there is going to be an active participation if the teacher wants if the teacher doesn't wants or the, if the teacher doesn't lets the children do those kind of thing if they are just sitting on the corner and just seeing how the things are happening the kind of learning which is going to happen is going to be a half hearted kind of thing opposite to that there is a setting in which the teacher is doing the demonstration again here the teacher is the one who is doing the activity but she is involving the students in probably arranging those materials or looking at the things which the teacher is doing or making them touch those things now what is going to happen here is that there is going to be an active participation of the students and definitely the learning is going to be much better than the previous one in which the teacher is just Uh, making the activity doing the activity in front of the children but not letting the children experience it now there is a difference in how the children would experience when they are doing with the things with their own hands and how they are experiencing the things when they are doing uh, seeing the things being done by somebody else but in both cases participation is important and participation is something which is going to make a difference now when the children are observing the demonstration they would understand the validity of the rules related to that activity which is to be provided through different examples now whatever uh, rules the teacher is going to uh, show or exhibit or discuss when she is uh, doing in a demonstration method the students are going to able to understand and that will be proved through different kind of examples now let's just understand how does this demonstration method goes it is followed in three stages the number one stage is demonstration of the procedure with rules you can see in the figure given you can see how it is starting it's the number one step is demonstration of the procedure with rules the second step is establishing the relationship between the rules related to the procedure 
and the third is justification through examples now even if you uh, closely look at this figure you're going to understand that these are the three basic steps which are involved the number one is demonstration now a teacher may think that uh, having done the demonstration she has done the job complete she has just done one step of the thing just come down to the second step it is talking about that you need to discuss the rules you need to establish the interrelationships between the rules between the concepts which are there in the procedure so having done the activity establishing the relationships and then moving further to justifying it through examples so probably only one activity may not be enough the teacher may have to go with several examples so as to justify the rules which she has um, established in the second stage now that's how demonstration works let's just have a quick recap of the same demonstration would work in three steps one is demonstration of the procedure through the rules through the procedure the second is establishing the interrelationship between the rules related to the procedure and third is justification through different examples other than the one which has been done in the demonstration method now that's about demonstration method let's move to another method which is a pretty popular method when it comes to work education it is talking about the practical method now what is happening here is here the principle of learning by doing in new circumstances is actually getting executed because here the students are going to be the one who are going to do the activity so principle of learning by doing in new circumstances and on the basis of the previous experiences is emphasized here so new circumstances are there because the new activity there is going to be new circumstance but you are laying emphasis on their previous experiences also so that's what is emphasized in the practical method now what are the four fundamental principles of practical method the number one is it's emphasizing on learning by doing second is it is emphasizing on activeness of the students third is the psychological principle because the students are feeling that they are part of the program they are part of the practical activity and obviously the learning is going to be better and the fourth one is the scientific because we all know that whenever you are doing a physical activity if it is not Uh, supplementing a mental mental activity whenever you are doing a mental activity and it is not being supplemented by a physical activity then the learning is going to be half hearted so in order to have the learning in its full form we need to understand that there are four fundamental principles when we talk about the practical method one is the learning by doing the second is the activeness of the students the third is the psychological principle and fourth is the scientific principle so if you go by all these four principles you keep all these principles in mind and then you going to plan the activities for uh, the practical portion of the things the things are going to be better with students understanding also so it really depends on the teacher that how does she go about the same now we have discussed about three methods we have talked about the demonstration method we have talked about the observation method and we have talked about the practical method but in all the three factors in all the three methods there is one th thread which is common and that's the teacher so if the teacher does it in a sincere manner with all her thoughts with all her sincere intentions also the learning impact is going to be very different and when i talk of learning it does not i am not just meaning the cognitive learning i'm talking about the values which the children are getting imbibed because that's the prime purpose of work education in classrooms now when we talk of work experience in schools work experience uh, among the children we definitely talk about not just the cognitive learning which is going to happen through it but also the kind of values the kind of attitudes the kind of beliefs the kind of skill sets the students are going to develop in the same line let me move down to another method which is another popular method which is used this is called the project method now what is happening in project method is it's it's supposed to be a purposeful activity which is accomplished with complete involvement in a social environment so what is happening here is the group of students would be put up in a social setting and they are going to accomplish something they would be given a project and there is going to be complete involvement of the children so again coming down to that principle of learning by doing here again the children are involved in the project method and they are going to do learning by doing kind of thing now every project method is used to attain a specific objective there has to be a specific objective when you are putting the children through a project method 
इट कैन नॉट बी अ हेव आई काइंड ऑफ थिंग दैट आई हैव जस्ट मूव टू द क्लास एंड आई थिंक आज ना लेट्स डू प्रोजेक्ट मेथड यू कैन नॉट डू दैट काइंड ऑफ थिंग इफ यू इंटेंड टू यूज प्रोजेक्ट मेथड देन यू नीड टू हैव अ स्पेसिफिक ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड वंस यू हैव सेट एन ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑल योर एक्टिविटीज विल बी अलाइंड इन द सेम मैनर वट एवर प्रोजेक्ट मेथड नीड्स टू डू वट एवर द काइंड ऑफ रिसोर्सेज द काइंड ऑफ सोशल सर्कमस्टांसिस और सोशल एनवायरमेंट यू नीड your children to be exposed to would depend on your specific objective for that project now there there can be several projects in one session also it's not necessarily that only one project can be done probably there can be more than one sessions more than one projects in a single session also now various kind of activities are organized on the basis of objectives coming again back to the same point that you have set up an objective for yourself it may be one objective or it may be several objectives for a project to be introduced in the classroom and if you have set more than three objectives or more than one objective then you need to plan various activities you need to organize various activities which can be successfully done and which can lead to the attainment of those objectives so that's how the project method would work further it also develops the students socially desirable values when they are working on a project see uh, the basic premise of the project method is that whatever activities are going to be done they are going to be done in a social environment and not a particularly controlled uh, school environment or a classroom environment so generally these kind of projects are done when they are community based so maybe a group of five children have been made and they have been put into a community setting and they've been asked to let's say let's take for an example they have to develop awareness about health and hygiene among the adolescent girls there now if the students are getting into this project objectives are clear what are the objectives since you're not going to do into your own setting your own classroom environment you are going to a community and doing it then a different kind of social environment is there and once children are into this kind of social environment they learn these socially desirable values while working with these people because there is this socially desirable value of being uh, cooperative or probably of being polite or having of good communication skills now all these things get exercised and develop and develop further once you are into this kind of setting and this kind of setting is offered only by the project method so project method is one of those important things which we need to understand and which we need to implement when we are introducing work education for the children now you can see in the diagram given again the project method is going by four steps the way the demonstration was going we when we talked about the demonstration method there were three method three steps when we talk about the project method there are four steps the number one step as discussed earlier is set the goals second is plan third is activate the plan and fourth is the evaluation now once you go through the steps you realize that how important is setting the goals goals here would mean the objectives which you are setting for a particular um, project so once you have set the goals then you need to plan then you need to activate the plan now for an outsider it may seem that activate the plan the third stage is the project method but it is not it's just one part of the four stages which are there in the project method starting with the goals planning which are happening not in the community setting which are happening outside the community or outside the social environment setting it may be happening in the classroom or it may happening it may be happening in the staff room also so first two stages are not happening in the social environment the four, third stage is happening and the fourth stage of evaluation is again a mixed kind of thing it may happen in that social environment also and it may happen once you have back from the social environment into your normal classroom and then you are evaluating yourself however it's a good idea if this evaluation is carried out side by side when the plan is being activated or the plan is being implemented because what's going to happen then is that you're going to get that chance of evaluating yourself that how far your things are going the way you wanted them to let's say if during the project or during the activation of the plan we realize that probably this is not leading to that objective which i had desired or which we had set when we had started with the project method then there are always chances of remodeling your things there you may work out another thing or you may look for another way out to reach the community or reach to uh, that particular objective 
So that's why evaluation holds an important uh, place in the project method because that's going to give you that chance to understand whether you have attained those particular objectives or not and if you have not then what needs to be done to reach that stage again probably um, a new plan would be needed or probably newer strategies would be needed and then the plan could be reactivated or the plan could be again changed. Now this is about the project method which was the fourth in the list which we are discussing in this session. There is another method which is very popular because it is going to give you some kind of relaxation also. So it is uh, known as the excursion method. Now what is happening in the excursion method why I said that it is going to give you some kind of relaxation also because it is a positive change. It brings a positive change by breaking the monotony and boringness of the sessions. Now what is happening in uh, the observation sessions or the demonstration sessions or in the regular routine of the classrooms that there is a monotony which sets in which creeps in in the normal classroom settings. So excursion since it means that you are moving out of the classroom, you are going into a social environment, you are going into a newer community setting. So it brings a positive change because it breaks the monotony and boringness of the session. Now that is one big advantage of the excursion method and it is a basic premise of the excursion method. Secondly, it gives you a practical knowledge of the subject which is being discussed in the class. Now practical knowledge because whatever you have learned in theory classes would be limited to the theory classes only until and unless you see them in the practical reality. Now excursion method would give you that opportunity that you give that practical knowledge of the subject which has been discussed in the class. Let us say um, I have discussed about how the milk plants work in a theoretical class and I have drawn a beautiful diagram on the blackboard and I have done everything. But now that is limited to the theoretical understanding. Now let us when I take these children or uh, the learners to a mother dairy booth or probably a milk plant then you realize the each and every step which goes through. See doing it on a blackboard and seeing it in a practical manner in the actual setting is something very different and we need to understand that doing it on the blackboard is also essential. We are not just trying to say that this is the one which is going to lead to results. That is an essential part that is also needed and this is also needed. For excursion method to be successful you need to proceed it with that blackboard thing also. Agar if we straight away take them to a milk plant and we just try to show them probably they are not going to retain much. So if it is preceded by a discussion in the classroom which has been done through other aids probably a blackboard or a PPT or any other kind of aids and then it is accompanied by uh, actually visiting that setting it is going to have a lasting results. Also there uh, in the excursion method what is happening is that the students ability of observation is developed to an extent. See what is happening is we started with the observation method, we talked about the observation method, we talked about the demonstration method and in both these methods you would realize that observation power of the students is something which is very important. So observation power has to be developed for any kind of method to be successful. Now if you take a brief look at all these five methods which we have discussed today in this session, whether you talk about the excursion method, whether you talk about the practical method, observation, demonstration, any of these methods you would realize that students ability to observe, observe and not just look at things. There is a difference between how we look at things and when we observe the things. So this ability of observation needs to be developed among the students and excursion method is one, um, one solicited method which would help in uh, aiding the students to observe the things. Now this is how the five methods work. And all these all of these methods have their own specific areas in which they are going to be more successful. Let us when we talk about the excursion method we realize that the knowledge attained, attained through excursion is permanent. Now this may be true for certain kind of knowledge and for certain other kind of knowledge maybe the practical things are going to be better. But again we also know that for every activity you cannot have a practical in the classroom because we are bounded by the time and we are bounded by the curriculum also. So we do not have those kind of resources also wherein we can do those kind of things with every portion. So for certain activities you may have to choose the method of observation for others the practical would fit in better for others the excursion could be there. 
Now we all know that students get the opportunity to work in groups while traveling during excursions. So here you develop the social skills of the children also. This happens in the project method also. If you have assigned a project to more than uh, one child and probably you have grouped a, a set of learners, four or five learners, you have grouped them in one group and then you have given them a project, then it is going to have a different kind of result. Similarly, excursion method, you would see that the students develop behavioral and communication skills. So it's not just about the theoretical knowledge or the practical knowledge which the students are gaining. In the excursion method, there is this tendency that the students would develop the behavioral and the communication skills also. Why? Because they would learn how to talk to other people how to engage with other people, how to communicate with other people. Now that's how the excursion method goes and we all understand that there are going to be different situations, different settings, different classroom environments, different kind of resources which would be available to you and accordingly you would have to choose out of the five methods. We discussed initially also that the kind of value I have as a teacher for the work experience and the kind of opinion I hold about that what values I am going to imbibe in the children or in the learners when they are engaging in work education and also my opinion about how do children learn. If as a teacher I hold that children learn only through blackboard then obviously my work education methods are going to be more or less focused on the blackboard only. But if I have that expanded horizon of how do children learn and I think that learning by doing goes best, then my methods are going to be aligned in the same manner. So just having a quick recapitulation, we need to understand that there are different factors which affect the teacher's choice of method or activity when she is dealing with work education in the settings. And there could be primarily five methods observation method, demonstration method, practical method, excursion method and project method and depending on the kind of situations the child is in, the learner is in, the kind of resources which the school has, the kind of community engagement which the teacher can exercise, we can determine or we can choose the method which should be used in a particular setting to reach a particular objective. That's all about the different kind of teaching learning methods which can be used in work education. I hope you had a nice time and you were able to understand and ascertain that what kind of methods which you can be used in the work education classrooms. Thank you students.